Happy New Year! Year! It's the 1st of January. Well, it's not for us, but when you're watching this, it will be so. Happy 2017! How does it feel to be in 2017? Let us know in the comments how cool 2017 is. Yeah, do you have a nice New Year's party? Are you hungover? Let us know. Like the video if you're hungover. Yes. And so basically what we're doing today is we're doing a nice 2016 look back at the games and things that happened to the industry Mm. over 2016 and looking forward to things over 2017 because obviously... There have been highs and lows over 2016, and frankly, uh, the future of games are looking a little bleak, yes. if, I, if I can be honest, but we'll get to that later yes. on in the video. So Harry, how's 2016 been for you in the industry? To me, it's been, there have been some highlights and some lowlights. Um, are lowlights a thing? I'm going to make them a thing. They're a thing now. Right. So to me, one thing that's stood out this year have been the smaller indie games, and uh, that's been the most fun I've had. Mm. I'm not sure what that says about the main in- the main games industry, but um, yeah. I, I think it says quite a lot, actually. Like, the games, I've had much more fun playing something like Cluster Truck than I have playing something like a PlayStation A AAA title, you know? I mean... It's very true. It's... There's there's kind of been a real mixture of stuff that's come out this year. So when it comes to indie games, like you said, yeah. we had games like That Dragon Cancer. We had games like Firewatch. We had games like... Inside all these really beautifully made yeah. games that capture you in specific ways that have really been given the right awards by the right kind of people because mm. these are how games should be made. They're done with reverence and they're done with care and they're genuinely wonderful and you look back on them fondly. So there's a load of positivity going from 2016 and I do love that. Aside from the indie titles, we had things like Overwatch, probably one of my favorite games ever. I've played that every (laughs) night since it's come out. Uh, We had Dark Souls 3, another one of my favorite games ever, just beautiful. We had the remake of Ratchet & Clank, which you can't see, it's off camera, but (laughs) we had the reboot of Ratchet & Clank, which is obviously very, very cool. Yeah, I love that debate. That was a great game. Oh god, we had Pokemon Go. Goodness me, Pokemon Go, I mean, that was flash in the pan, but when it was flashing, it was great fun. Oh my god, it was. And then we've had things like Battlefield 1, Mm. uh, Virtual Reality, obviously, which we talked about in one of our previous hog-offs, has uh, has been a massive part of 2016 because it's kind of been where it's all come from. It's all stemmed from here, including the hardware and including the kind of developers behind Mm. the smaller games. So ups and downs, some really, really good games. The one we should probably talk about is... I don't want to say it. You have to. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no Man's Sky. Now, yeah. this game was... It was hyped up for so long. Not by them, though. I will just add that. They never hyped it up more than it was. It was us, the idiots, that hyped it up. Like The Last Guardian. You all hyped it up too much. <laughs> you hyped it up too much and you let yourselves down. Yeah, to be honest, that was the biggest letdown of the year for me, The Last Guardian. Because it just... It, I've been waiting for it for so long and it just couldn't quite possibly live up to my expectations. But we discussed that in another video. You can see that in the link down there. Somewhere. I don't know if we filmed it yet, but <laughs> yeah, it might yeah. be down there. Sure. Surprise yourself. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, No Man's Sky, you know, I, it, it snowballed. It got too big. People got too excited. And I think there are these games like No Man's Sky that, you know, prop... I don't know how to describe this. Like, well, they have the, they have the features that they, they were boasting, but do them better, I think. What's this? Like, dedicated PC gamers and you know, the wider audience are two separate things. And I think that No Man's Sky is one of those ones that broke out from that really keen crowd into the wider audience. And that's when it started to snowball. People were like, what, what is this? It's so exciting. And yeah, it went from there. People got too excited, people got too carried away. And it just, again, it just couldn't possibly be anything more than it set out to be. Even the press were jumping on how massive this game was. Mm. I was interviewed on BBC Radio Surrey (laughs) on multiple mornings to discuss Pokemon Go and No Man's Sky, because they were both things that everyone was talking about. Everyone had Pokemon Go for two weeks. Yeah, Yeah. I know you don't play it anymore. Well, some of you do. But seriously, everyone on Earth went mental for that game. No Man's Sky, pretty much everyone did too. Admittedly, then, when it came out, it was... It's still quite clever, and it still is enjoyable, but for about 13 hours. <laughs> the problem is they did they basically released a half-baked, half-finished game. Like Harry said, there are other games that do what No Man's Sky does slightly better, but have more features that are more engaging, like base building, which admittedly, they have now added in. Mm. And they're now going to be expanding what the game is and what the game involves. And I, I'm okay with that. It's a, it's a, there's an essence of too little too late, That's but I want... Words out my mouth, though. I think the game has so much potential, and it... 
to, to just go, oh, well, that was shit, and to never look at it again would be such a shame. So I, I do want to give it a chance, but it's not the only bad game that has happened over this year. Do you have any others that have sprung to mind? Uh, ones that let me down, or...? Let's let's stick with ones that have let you down so far. I think it's good to revisit um, VR for a second. One thing that I was really looking forward to uh, was... I can't even remember the name of it now. Good. Um, fuck, what was it called? Uh, the fucking Oculus one that was Lovecraftian. I can't even remember its name. It was the that darkest, much one. The deepest. The dying. No, fuck. God damn it. No, I can't. Keep, I keep stalling. Yes. Um, I, 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 uh, da, ba, da, ba, ba, da, boo. Edge of nowhere. Thank you. Edge of nowhere. Had to go. Had to go look that up. I mean. That was the one game I was looking forward to most this year, just because I love the guys that develop it. I love Insomniac. Mm -hmm. The premise was really cool. I thought, okay, was cool. it the VR well, okay, game yeah. you can actually look into, and it's a different take on things. Exciting, and then so dull. That there is my problem that you just said there. The oh. looking in on it. Virtual reality is not a third person thing. It's a first person thing. It's the point of virtual reality. Stop making games where you're the camera. That's yeah. not how people work. Admittedly, it was nice to try it. We now know it doesn't work. Stop it. So there have been there have been a couple of other games that have really leapt to mind with me. Now we disagree on this, but Quantum Break. What a steaming <laughs> pipe. Again, another game that was given too much press energy and time, and that was getting advertised with these really big CGI stuff, and oh wow, look how real that twat looks, I can't remember his name. But it, the game is so boring, I don't understand, it was overly hyped up, it tried yeah. too hard to pad itself out with boring TV tie-ins, it had yeah. some okay time-space manipulation stuff, but it's just surrounded by terrible exposition and crap, like... It, anyway. I can't I can't put it in words, I'm speechless. But yeah, there's too many bad games. Mighty number no. nine, another one that's basically let the world mm. down. Were you aware of what happened with that? I wasn't though. No. It was like a Mega Man spiritual successor. It was ah. hyped up for ages. It got cancelled, it got delayed. Then that was it. Nothing happened. So anyway, enough yeah. of the negativity of 2016. Down. What's been your favourite game this year? That is tough. I'm gonna have to go with Overwatch. Okay. Just that's... because I it's it's a game that I've been looking to have for a while. It takes the essence of things like MOBAs, like maybe even Paragon or stuff like mm. that, less so Dota and LOL, but then also takes in things like Team Fortress and sure. kind of Call of Duty Battlefield style stuff, but with the special powers, with the unique characters, with the things like the animation and the comic book backstories, you get loads of stuff with it. It's just a rich universe with a fun game that I like to play with my friends. Oh, and that's that why I love. That was a good choice. Yeah, so we, uh, yeah, basically to, to kind of reference <laughs> that, today is the day that Tracer was announced as gay. It's been confirmed. Long time they coming. released a thing. The internet's gone mad over it. Why do you all care? She likes girls. I've seen plenty of porn of that. It doesn't change a thing. We have anyway, Harry, subscribers. what was your favorite game of 2016? <laughs> so one game that really started this year to me more than any others was One Night Stand. Now we discovered yes. this on Steam. It's an indie developer and you know, we played it through how many times? Six times and I still want to play more of it. It was, even though it's the same game over and over again, I just fell in love with it. It's such a nice premise, so cool. Presented beautifully as well. That art style is Gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. And, you know, I did, I, yeah, spectacular game. Bravo to the developer. Um, she did a fantastic job. She did. Kimoku87's Twitter yeah. is down there, so please do be sure to go follow Lucy Blund Lucy Blundell, Blundell, yeah. Blundell. I don't know, but she's wonderful. She's been yeah. very helpful to us, and her game is perfection. Go and check it out. Indeed. So, looking forward to 2017. Indeed. Now, I did say at the beginning of the video that the future of games is looking a little bit bleak, and it is, because mm. can you name. Anything big and hyped up? There are two things I'm looking forward to next year, on. and one I don't think will actually happen, and that is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Ooh. Now, Final Fantasy VII remains one of my favourite games of all time. I know everyone says that, but I, I love it a bit. It is great. And, you know, we've all been, you know, pestering Square Enix to remake this for a long time. And i got to be honest, I think it's going to be one of those ones that just won't live up to the expectations, but regardless of how it's made, I, just, I can't wait to play it, because I just think... I mean, if it does go in 2017, which I suspect it won't because it'll probably be delayed years. But <laughs> can't wait for that. Um, one other game I'm looking forward to very much is Pray for the Gods, which is a Kickstarter. I support it, and you all should too. Well, it's too late, but go and buy it when it's out. Absolutely. Because um, that is a Shadow of the Colossus type successor, spiritual successor. And um, again, one of my favourite games. You know, I, I don't know if it's telling that the games I'm most looking forward to are like remakes of my old favourite games. So yeah, so that, that's my piece. Um, on to you, Edward. Well, 
Can you name a single game you're excited for next year? Absolutely, I can. So Horizon Zero Dawn is one that I've been yes. looking forward to for some time. It's it's admittedly not a very different game. The premise I quite like. I like Zords. I like <laughs> mecha things, Gundams. And seeing giant AI robot T-Rexes cool. blew my mind. I love that. That was exciting to me. It was a cool premise. Rest of the game, I have, but I've only tried a little bit of it at E3. Did enjoy it. It's not the best game in the world, but with time put into it, I think I'll probably love it. Sure. Zelda Breath of the Wild. Of course. How could I forget that? The best Zelda game we've ever played, or at least that I've ever played. And it's fun, engaging, and different. And I, that's why I like it, because as some of you may have seen in our Super Mario Run review, I don't like rehashes that get rehashed over and over and over again. If you're remastering something like Shadow of the Colossus or Ratchet and Clank, I like that because it's it's taking something old and just brushing it up to make it look nicer for now. That's fine. Remaking it completely and doing nothing, that's boring and soulless. Mm. And honestly, this game doesn't do that. It just features so many new things, new enemies, a bigger overworld, new, multiple weapons. You can get multiple weapons now. Obviously, you have things like yeah. the boomerang and that, but you can pick up stuff. You can get at swords off enemies. All these new little things that were just never there before that I'm really, really excited to. Mm. And those are, those are the kind of two that really stand out to me, but there's two others, and they're both on platforms I don't own uh, because it's on the Xbox One. Okay. The first one is Scalebound, a kind of Devil May Cry-ish, monster hunty kind of game with a little whiff of Final Fantasy in there with big-ass dragons in it. You're giggling at something, what is it? Monster hunty, you just added funny. <laughs> Sorry. So basically, this game is like, you you play a kind of Dante slash Nero from Devil May Cry 4 kind of knobhead, complete with Drade beats. Of course. And basically you have a dragon. And that alone was enough to make me go, ooh. Some of the gameplay looks quite good, so not much has come out about it. I'm looking forward to seeing more news on it. But hopefully it'll be all right. And the mm. final thing that I'm looking forward to, which we got to try at E3, is Sea of Thieves by Rare. How can I forget that? Now, that looks amazing. I it mean, does. As far as, you know, games to play with your friends go, it's awesome. It's a pirate game. You can play different roles. You know, it's it's rare. And it's rare doing what they should be doing. Awesome games. It's basically you know? Guns of Icarus Online, but on pirate ships. And like you said, you get to play with your friends on a team where you have to communicate and yeah. work together to make things work. And I love that. The guys were very nice at Rare. The game is genuinely very fun to play. It looks great. Mm. I'm really excited for that to come out. You just said something very interesting, which was, it's the kind of thing you want to play with your friends. Speaking of things you want to play with your friends, the Nintendo Switch is also going to be coming out. Now, my mm. excitement for this has diminished slightly, and I'll yep. tell you why. A couple of days ago, it was recently announced that the, the device itself, when taken out of the dock, will run at 40% of the power and speed that it can when docked. Wow, that's yeah. quite a lot. Yeah, and considering it's already allegedly a 720p screen, and the graphics of Nintendo consoles aren't great at the best of times, I'm starting to get a little down about it. But, so, you know, maybe over, over detailing aside, the premise of the Switch does excite me a bit. Admittedly, I'd quite like Nintendo to do something really new, but basically what they're doing is they're taking the Wii U and making that more portable. And I love the Wii U. Yeah, it failed as a console generation. I'm not going to say it didn't. But it has games on it that I want to play. Mario Kart, Smash Bros, Zelda, things like that. And the Switch will have those. I could take that wherever I want. I can hand you a controller. We could play it on a long train journey. I like that. Oh, and I want that. Maybe about half an hour before the battery dies. That is true. Well, 40% of the power is going to be a long battery. But again, I mean, it, it's a new idea and we'll see where it goes. Much like virtual reality uh, last year, you know, this year. New things are coming out, and we're excited to try them, and you'll be able to see it all on Game Hog in 2017. Exactly, and obviously we'll be having some uh, major, not major changes, but basically some subtle changes to Game Hog. We're actually going to be doing away with our 14-year-old bedroom attire back here, and we will be replacing them with... Wait. These. So now you know. I mean, you'll see it when it's up. Yeah, <laughs> and it's going to look and sound great. Yeah. But yeah. Let us know in the comment section what you guys hated about 2016, what you loved about 2016. Let us know anything that you're really looking forward to in 2017. And let us know your thoughts on the gaming industry as a whole at the moment. Always, guys. I mean, thank you so much for supporting us throughout this last year. We'll have our one year anniversary coming up in February. We will, February 5th. There you are. There you are. <laughs> so come on to the channel for that day and all the days before then for all the latest Game Hog stuff. Indeed. Anyway, guys, a happy new year to all of you hogs. Hope you guys had a great New Year's Eve. Hope you had a great Christmas. And we will see you guys through the rest of 2017. See you then, guys. Bye, Bye Zs. Zs.